Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of market research using the powerful tool AmiBroker to validate system ideas and market ideas over history. Uh, this is really, really cool. And today I am so excited to bring this one to you because it's based on one of the most famous trading books of all time, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Um, you know, one of my personal favorite um, trading books. It's a great story, a rollicking great read, you might call it. Now, you've probably already heard the story. It's about Jesse Livermore, um, but it's sort of told under a pseudonym of Larry Livingston in the book. And during the book, he describes his adventures in trading, and he even outlines some of his own personal methods. This particular video is not based on that because there's too there's too many gaps sort of in in what he describes. However, uh, in chapter ten he does actually describe a, a full trading system that one of the clients of a brokerage house uses and had used for many many years. And that man is Pat Hearn. So Pat Hearn in the book uh, he has a great probably one of the greatest sayings and that is you can't tell until you bet. In other words, if you're going to, to make a play in the market or have an opinion, you really can't tell if you're going to be right or wrong until you actually bet on it. Pat Hearn made money for many, many years, and in the book, as it says, that made people ask him for advice as well. Uh, later on, there was a guy who tried to copy his style of trades, but he couldn't stick to the system, and he ended up losing many, many thousands of dollars, unfortunately for him. But you know what? What if we could actually validate that system that Pat Hearn used um, to keep himself in a comfortable life lifestyle for his entire life at that brokerage house? And the fact is, we actually can using AmiBroker and the and the data going back to the early 1900s. Now the system itself is very very simple, and it's possibly why it had such an appeal um, to a few different people, uh, especially to that to that person in the book who tried to trade it as well. That is, if a, if a market moves up one percent then Pat Hearn would buy, and then on each 1% movement up, he would continue to buy, or continue to pyramid into the stock. Now obviously, uh, he, he said he didn't want to give any back to the market as well, so on a 1% fall, he would sell all of his holdings in that particular stock as well. Now, I'm testing on the Dow Jones because that's the only you know real thing that I have uh, that goes back that far, so we can tell if it would have worked at the time, and we could tell if it would still work today day as well, or in between. So this is really, really cool. This is what it looks like. I'm just going to, to go into the Dow Jones. This is um, around 1901, 1902, and I'm just going to overlay this particular um, trading system on the chart. So the blue line is where it buys and sells initially. So if it crosses above that bl blue line, um, that's your 1% reaction. And as you can see, there's that arrow it will buy. Now, when it does that, the green line is, is for each of our pyramids. So once it does that, 1% above that buy, or the closing price when it buys, um, that's where the pyramid will start. Now, as you can see, it does pyramid, and then it closes below our blue line, so it sells, it sells everything. Same deal again, we've got a 1% move upwards, so it buys, and then 1% above that closing price, and that's where our pyramid, and it pyramids again, pyramids again, and then ultimately it sells on that 1% reaction. Like any good trend following system, you could, ha you could have a lot of long winners and then a lot of short term um, losses. Here's a great example of that. As you can see, it buys and then sells very, very quickly on that 1% reaction. So, you know, not too much love lost. And then when it does want to buy, it buys and buys and buys and buys and buys into that trend and into that strength and then sells on that 1% reaction as well. So, how did this actually perform from 1900? Now, the book Reminiscences of a Stock Operator was published in 1923. So, I'm just going to take that, that time period from from 1900, which is what I have, um, all the way up until 1923. Let's quickly check and see what it actually looks like um, from a buy and hold point of view. So we've got from 1900, there we go, uh, just moving on, moving on, and I'll get rid of the... I'll get rid of that. So now we've got all the way up to about 1923. There we go. Fantastic. So as you can see, it's up and down, up and down, up and down. Really, this is over 23 years and there's it's a very, very shoddy uptrend. <laughs> so looking at that on a long-term basis, it doesn't look too good. Um, if we were to look at the actual buy and hold results, 
um, that would be it. So starting with the $50,000 portfolio, which again, I know, you know, you wouldn't be doing that in 1900, but just for our example's sake, <laughs> you'd be ending with $76,000. Um, plenty of drawdowns at 40% as well. I mean, that would be a very hard time to trade. And this is the time when, when Larry Livingston or Jesse Livermore was actually um, trading. And so, you know, it's actually pretty cool to see he had some tough market conditions to, to be up against. So let's have a look at the trading system um, and see how those results actually come up. Well, this is from 1900 to 1923. And what I've done is I've used 150% leverage. So, you know, another half again of the equity that we have and I've taken equal positions up to five total positions. So nothing too fancy, you know, um, you know, very, very simple stuff. But as you can see, uh, the equity curve is much, much smoother and it goes in one direction, which is great. Um, unlike this particular one here, which sort of goes up and down as a buy and hold. So you know what? There might actually be some credit to this particular trading system. How cool is that? Obviously it has a drawdown, but it's nowhere near as bad as the buy and hold at 20%. So let's look at this. Now, this is our in-sample period, so to speak. This is the period, I guess, that, that um, Jesse Livermore was, was speaking about in his story, um, about Pat Hearn and about the guy that traded it as well. Um, so what happens when we take this to out-of-sample results? In other words, everything from 1923 all the way through to today. Now, first of all, let's look at a simple buy and hold, just so we know what we're up against. Um, and this is from 1900 all the way through. So I've just taken the whole, I've taken the whole time from 1900 all the way through to, to 2016 currently. Um, it turns that, that hypothetical $50,000 portfolio, it would end up with around $12 million just from a simple buy and hold. Um, it does have a terrible drawdown for buy and hold. Um, 90% in, in the stock market crash during the 1930s and, and late 1920s. So even though it did have that crash in 1929, I think the, the ensuing bear market that followed after that was actually did a lot more damage. That, is, that would be really, really hard to hold on to. Um, and obviously you had the depression during that time too. So, I mean, this is really full on stuff, um, you know, that's a very, very big drawdown. Haven't seen the likes of it since. Um, but ultimately, it ends up in positive territory and, uh, and we've got a positive return there. So that's pretty cool. Now we have the moment of truth. Let's look at the actual results for the 1% the up and the 1% pyramiding rule um, that Pat Hearn used in Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Uh, as you can see, this is the drawdown chart. So the drawdown is not that bad during uh, the 1930s. So during the depression, it, it, it's basically around 40% instead of the 90% of a buy and hold. However, and actually from then, from the 1940s all the way through to the 1980s, you know, it, it's really, really cool. Less than you know, five to 10% drawdowns for the whole time. And that's really, really great. Um, now, as you can see, um, let's have a look at our actual return. So here we go, we've got our, our return, beautiful, smooth, smooth equity curve for those years between 1940 and 1980. And then things start to get a little bit bumpy. We've got the 1987 crash right here, that's our 15% drawdown on the, using this method. So you know what? Not too bad, not as bad as it could have been. Um, it goes all the way up to around 2000 um, and it starts to fall away and it has been falling away for the last 16 years. <laughs> so this is, this is a very, very, this would be tough, you know, it'd be tough to trade. In fact, a lot of people would comment that this trading system was broken and basically couldn't be used from here on in. I mean, really, I couldn't use it for 16 years losing money like that. That would be almost impossible um, for someone, especially myself, to do. As you can see, there's the drawdown, and it goes all the way down to about 40% drawdown currently. The end result as well is nowhere near that 12 million um, you know, end result that we had for our hypothetical buy and hold portfolio. In fact, it ends somewhere near the 3,700,000 mark over around that 110, 116 years. Now, there are a few comments you could make about this um, because there are two schools of thought. Um, one school of thought is that 
is that once a trading system stops working, then it's technically broken. And once it's broken, you know, you've got all of these people, it's probably broken because too many people are trading it, or pe and they're sort of eroding the edge of the trading system, so to speak, and so it will never be a, a valid trading system ever again. Now, certainly if you've traded that over the last 16 years, you would be thinking that, <laughs> and that's exactly right. Now, there's another school of thought as well, in that if you have a robust trading system, uh, then you know it should work no matter what your conditions actually are. Um, and you know no matter what the edge is, no matter how many people are trading, it technically if it's robust enough then it should never be broken and it should have varying degrees of profitability so given that we've seen the same thing happen in in around the 1930s um, but also given that in the 1930s they didn't have computer programs to do this stuff very easily <laughs> so now we've got lots more people who are able to do this very very quickly and very easily and code it in just in the same way that I've done here uh, so I'd like to hear your thoughts you know what do you think do you think that this is a trading system that is you know potentially could go on forever and ever um, is it robust enough is it simple enough um, has it worked over a long enough um, in sample and out of sample period? Um, or is this trading system technically broken uh, given that it has underperformed seriously for the last 16 years out of 116 years? Feel free to leave a comment um, or even swing by my website. It's asxmarketwatch.com. I thought this was a really, really cool thing to do and, you know, possibly the longest out of sample period that I've ever experienced myself personally. I think it's just so great. Um, so guys, have a great week. As I said, check out the website. A whole bunch of free stuff there. It's really, really cool. Happy trending until we meet again and bye for now.